Welcome to the second part of this tutorial on C Sharp Inheritance. If you haven't seen the first part of this two part video series on C Sharp Inheritance, please view the first part before watching this video. A link to the first part of this tutorial on C Sharp Inheritance can be found below in the description. So let's say there is a requirement that an import tax be deducted from the value of desks when calculating the total value of desks in stock. So to address this new requirement, let's add a public property to the desk class. Let's name this property import tax percentage. So this new requirement means we need to implement custom code for the desk class for when calculating the total value of desks in stock. So to achieve this, we need to override the get total value in stock method. Notice that the get total value in stock method is not included in the IntelliSense dropdown list. So this means we need to include the virtual keyword in the get total value in stock methods method definition in the product base class. We can now override the functionality that is implemented in the product base class in our derived desk class. So we can now see the get total value in stock method in the IntelliSense dropdown list. So let's select the get total value in stock method from the IntelliSense dropdown list. And you can see that Visual Studio generates default code for us. This code includes a call to the base class's get total value in stock method. So note the base keyword allows us to access accessible members in the base class. So we are going to use the base keyword in this method to call the get total value in stock method in the base class to return the total value of stock for desks. So in order to address the new requirement, we must add the specialized code in the desk derived classes get total value in stock method to deduct the import tax from the total value of the desk items in stock to get the net stock value for the desks we currently have in stock. Then let's implement code to return this calculated decimal value from the customized get total value in stock method. Let's implement code in the main method to include the functionality we have just implemented. So in order to access the import tax percentage property, we need to cast the desk object to a desk type because we are declaring the desk object in our code as the product type. Let's then set the property value for the import tax percentage property to two. And let's run the code. And you can see the appropriate import tax has been deducted to arrive at the net value of the desks we currently have in stock. Okay, let's think about the design of our classes for a moment. There could be millions of products with very different variations. A drone is a product, a desk is a product, but a desk and a drone are clearly two different entities. But in the context of our online store, both these entities are products. A drone can be one particular real world entity, a desk can be one particular real world entity. In the context of our online store, a product cannot be one particular real world entity like a drone or a desk. It can potentially refer to a multitude of disparate entities that in the context of our online store can generically be referred to as products. So what I'm getting at here is that in the context of our online store application, a product is an abstract concept. We have given the product type its meaning in terms of our online store. A drone can be represented as a class, and this class represents a real-world object that cannot be anything other than a drone. A drone is a drone. A desk is always a desk, but a product can be a desk, and it can be a drone. A desk, however, cannot be a drone. So we can incorporate the notion that the product type is an abstraction into our application design by implementing the product class as an abstract class. We can do this by using the abstract keyword preceding the class keyword in our definition of the product class. So please note the following facts about an abstract class in C-sharp. An object cannot be directly instantiated from an abstract class. In order for code within an abstract class to be accessible to calling code, it must serve as the base class for a derived class. An abstract class can contain code implementations for members, but Certain members can also only serve as definitions for members, for example, definitions for methods or properties. 
Within an abstract class, the abstract keyword can be used in property and method definitions, which will mean that these members will contain no code implementation. These members will only serve as definitions for methods or properties. The abstract keyword used in this manner enforces a rule that any class that is derived from the abstract base class must implement code for methods or properties that contain the abstract keyword as part of their definitions. Any derived class must contain code that overrides these abstract properties and methods and provide code implementations for these properties and methods. So now that we have made the product class an abstract class, I want to demonstrate the use of an abstract member. We could use an abstract method for this demonstration, but I'm going to use an abstract property for this purpose. So let's create an abstract property named product name. As discussed, an abstract member means any classes that derive from the abstract class must override the abstract members. An abstract member only contains a definition and does not contain any code implementation. It is up to the derived class that inherits from the abstract class to implement code for any of the abstract members. In this case, all our derived classes must override and implement code for the product name property. Okay, so if we look at one of our derived classes, let's look at the desk class, you can see a red squiggly line under the class name. If we hover our mouse pointer over the red squiggly line, let's see what message pops up. So basically, this message is saying that we need to implement code to override the abstract property. So if we click show potential fixes, and then implement abstract class. Visual Studio creates default implementation for the product name property. Okay, so let's implement our own custom code for the product name property. Right, so our code implementation for our product name property simply returns the name of the product, desk. But we want this property to be a read-only property, i.e. we don't want calling code to be able to modify the product name property. So let's go back to our product abstract class and remove the set section from our abstract property definition in the product abstract class. Okay, so let's appropriately implement code for the product name abstract properties for all our remaining derived classes. Note, the code will not compile until all the derived classes have appropriately implemented code to override the product name abstract property. The abstract keyword denoting an abstract member and our abstract class enforces a rule that all derived classes must override and implement code for all abstract members in the abstract base class. Okay, so in C-Sharp and .NET, an implicit inheritance automatically occurs for both classes and structs. For example, all classes in C-Sharp implicitly inherit from the system.object type. All structs, for example, implicitly inherit from the system.value type abstract class and the system.valueType abstract class inherits from the system.object class. So all types in C-sharp ultimately inherit from the root type system.object. So to prove this, we are going to override one of the public methods of the system.object type, which is available to any class in C-sharp. Let's override the toString method in our base abstract class product. And we are going to simply implement code in this method to return the following values serialized as a string. Product name, price, quantity, and total value. The total value is the return value from the getTotalValue in stock method. Each derived class may have its own implementation of this method because it is a virtual method. If the method is not overridden, the default calculation of price multiplied by quantity, which is implemented in the product abstract class, will be used to perform this calculation and return the appropriate value. So let's go back to our main method and implement and add all the product objects that have been instantiated, namely desk, standard drone and turbo drone to an array of products. Let's then loop through this array of products using a for each loop and notice that because we have overridden the system.object class's two string method, that when the product object variable is passed to the console.writeLine method, the serialized string returned by our override implementation of the system.object class's toString method is returned. This will result in the appropriate serialized string values being written to the console screen for all of the product objects added to the products array. In the interests of formatting, let's create a heading.
Okay, let's test this code. Great. You can see that all the relevant information for each of our product objects that inherit from the product abstract base class have been written to the console screen. I want to demonstrate through a basic example a way that inheritance can be very powerful when implemented correctly. So let's say there is a requirement to calculate a grand total value for all products in stock. So let's do this by calling the sum method on our products array. Okay, so the sum method doesn't seem to be available. If we hover our mouse pointers over the red squiggly line under our sum method and click show potential fixes, the c -sharp compiler is suggesting that we are missing the using system.link directive. So let's include this directive at the top of our code by clicking the using system.link menu option. The details of Link are beyond the scope of this tutorial, but basically Link provides us with useful extension methods, one of which is the sum method, that can be applied to a collection of objects to perform useful tasks, like finding the average for a collection of values, or calculating the sum of a collection of values, finding the min or max value on a collection of values, etc. So, extension methods are also beyond the scope of this tutorial. Extension methods will be discussed in an upcoming tutorial. So for this example, let's implement the sum method. And if you're not familiar with lambda expressions, the code I'm passing as a parameter, the sum method, may be confusing. Lambda expressions are beyond the scope of this tutorial. Both link and lambda expressions will be explored in upcoming tutorials. For now, all you need to know is that the get total value in stock method, which is implemented for all the product objects in the products array, is executed on all the product objects in the products array, and then the sum method sums up all the values returned by the get total value in stock method and returns the result to a variable we have defined as a decimal named grand total stock value. So the combination of inheritance and link have provided us with an elegant solution to meet the requirement of providing a grand total value for our stock. Let's write the code that writes the grand total stock value to the console screen. Right, let's run the code. Great. So finally, in the previous tutorial on C-sharp classes, we used an array list instead of an array to store a collection of employee objects. The advantage of using an array list is that the developer doesn't need to declare the number of items that will be stored in the collection when declaring the ArrayList object, the ArrayList can grow dynamically. The disadvantage, however, is that an ArrayList is not strongly typed and stores generic objects. This means that when an item of a specific type is retrieved from an ArrayList, that the item must be cast appropriately. So we can get both the strongly typing functionality provided in an array and the dynamic growth functionality provided to us by an ArrayList by using a generic list collection. Details of generic collections are beyond the scope of this tutorial and will be discussed in an upcoming tutorial, but here's a brief introduction to the generic list type in c -sharp. So to use a generic list in our code, we must include a directive using system.collections.generic at the top of our code editor. We can then replace the products array we are currently using to store a collection of product objects with a generic list. So here we are strongly typing our products list by including the product type within greater than and less than symbols like this. Details of C-sharp generics is beyond the scope of this tutorial and will be the focus of an upcoming tutorial. By doing this, we are able to dynamically add any number of product objects to our products list. When we retrieve an item from the products list, we do not have to include casting code because all items in the list have been strongly typed as the product type.
Let's run the code. And we get the same result, but we are now able to take advantage of the rich functionality provided through the use of a strongly typed generic list. We discussed that inheritance is when a derived class inherits from a base class, and that base class members can therefore be reused across one or more derived classes that inherit from the base class. We discussed that c and .NET provides support for single inheritance and does not provide support for multiple inheritance. However, inheritance in c and .NET is transitive, making it possible to establish an inheritance hierarchy for a set of types. We created an abstract base class and discussed that an abstract class in c cannot be instantiated directly as an object. Code within an abstract class can only be consumed through an object instantiated from a class that is derived from the abstract base class. We demonstrated that an abstract class can contain both members with code implementation and members that only serve as definitions for members, for example, definitions for methods or properties. We demonstrated how a member, for example, method or property, marked with the abstract keyword, must be overridden and subsequently implemented with code in any class that inherits from the abstract base class. We demonstrated that the virtual keyword applied to a member within a base class means that a derived class can override the base class member. However, this is not mandatory, as is the case when a base class's member is marked with the abstract keyword. We demonstrated how all classes in c implicitly inherit from the system.object class. We demonstrated a basic example showing the power of combining the use of inheritance, link, and a generic list to aggregate data for a report. Right, we'll continue to delve into the principles of object-oriented programming and focus on C-sharp polymorphism in the next tutorial, which will be the 19th part of the C-sharp for Beginners course. Please like, subscribe, share, comment to support the channel. It will be greatly appreciated. And please smash the bell icon to be notified of future content, which will be coming soon. As always, the code created in this tutorial can be downloaded from GitHub. Please see a link to the relevant GitHub repository below in the description. Thank you and take care.